Hi guys, it's Wayne from Wayne Goodman Photography. Um, I said the other day in one of my videos that I would do a bit of a uh, sort of review of the images I've taken, sample images I've taken with the Sony 55mm FE 1.8 lens. Uh, really great lens. Um, it's around about, I think, £650 here in the UK, which is not cheap by any standards, but um, according to a lot of people, for what you get for your money, um, a very, very solid performance, very good out of focus areas, uh, you know, nice and sharp in the in focus areas. And um, this is an image I took from Matt uh, for his channel, for Matt Granger at mattgranger.com. Um, and I thought it was, a, it was a good image to sort of see detail. Um, I've got a few others that we can look at as well, um, you know, and we'll, we'll sort of have a, a bit of a look at how it's performed with me. Um, these images from here on, uh, so the ones after this, uh, they were honestly very, very quick photos. I mean, I was just literally, I'd just finished with Matt. I had to go and get something done with my car. So I was just on the way back to the car and I just took a few quick snaps. Um, but first impressions were overall very good for the lens. Um, I, I would agree so far with other people. Um, it's, uh, yeah, very, very nice performance. So here we have Matt and uh, if we zoom in, Got some nice details on the face here. I mean, I think I, I was focusing on his eyes or trying to. So yeah, so we've got pretty much, yeah, I think I pretty much hit the focus on his eyes there. So I'm gonna get more detail around here on his face. So you can see very, very, very sharp there. Um, really, really nice. The background, um, this was probably I'd say this is about 10 feet away from the back of Matt, um, this area here on the left hand side. And you can see even at, this is a F4, um, you know, so very, um, you know, a very nice out of focus, even at F4, um, you know, nice and blurry, not too distracting. Um, I really, I do like the rendition of this lens quite a bit actually. Um, this image here, this is actually, I have played about with this one just to, to get the colours that I was happy with and stuff. Um, it's a statue in, in Manchester and we also have um, another one of that here um, at a place called the Bridgewater Hall. Now this is a f1.8. This here would be probably the best part of maybe, I don't know, about 10 or 15 feet behind the statue, behind the bus. So, um, you know, so we can zoom in here and just sort of see how much detail is in these areas here. I thought it was pretty, uh, you know, just nice and sharp and crisp, even at f1.8 in the middle of the lens. Um, just like that. Yeah, so very good detail, really is. Uh, these, these images are all going to make me say the same thing. Great center sharpness great out of focus areas um, but I just wanted to show you a few examples this was shooting into the light um, I've got one here at 1.8 this item here is actually a, the tallest building we have in Manchester it's a hotel and an apartment facility um, if we then go to f13 um, you know you can see just uh, the difference in depth of field there and how crisp uh, and how, how nice the um, I like sort of the, the starburst effects off this lens as well. I think it's a nine blade aperture, uh, which is, you know, it's, it gives a good quality uh, starburst if you want that effect. Um, got a bit of lens flare here. That's another reason why I shot into the sun. Um, some people like that, some people don't. I mean, I, with this particular shot, I would have probably edited this out because it's not, uh, doesn't add anything to the image. Um, but you know, still a very good performance considering how strong the sun actually was. Um, you know, it was really sort of sunset, um, and the sun was really sort of directly at me in this in this instance. Um, you can see that I brought the shadows up, um, and if we do that, you know, so that's the A7R2, you know, power of, of managing the shadows and the highlights as well. Um, Here's another out of focus image, so you can see just how quickly the depth of field just falls off, um, and you get that lovely focus blur. These were there's actually about ten of these poles, and they just sort of blur into a lovely, lovely mush, um, which I, I think is really pretty actually compared to a lot of lenses that I've seen. This really does seem to do a really nice job of it. Um, 
this is my car I've blocked the number plate out um, I focused around this area here um, and again I had to bring the uh, I had to bring the exposure right up because the Sun was directly at me so we're at 1.5 plus stops here which is uh, it's quite a lot um, I was surprised actually that you know it didn't just totally fall apart that because most of my cameras in the past would have done so so if we just zoom in on there and we can see the the detail in the tires um, you know so you can see the brake dust around the wheels and um, you know so really really good performance there and then just how quickly it falls off if my computer will keep up and let me uh, zoom out so you can see that we've got the um, let's just wait for that to render properly there we go so you can see already by the the indicator on the side of the car here it's it's gone out of focus and the door handle can just about sort of start to see it's just totally totally blurred um, so just a really nice um, you know way that it does that um, there's not many lenses that I've seen even for a lot more money that actually managed to not give a really distracting sort of out of focus background um, this shot here I was just going to have left it totally underexposed so I thought we could actually just bring that up and I'll show you how it performs uh, in terms of noise uh, on the a7r2 as well so um, if we just uh, so we're at zero at the minute if we just bring that up to say about there that gives us a nice sort of uh, average exposure I bring the highlights down a bit and yeah, I don't really need to do too much with the shadows. So um, now we have a nicely exposed image. Um, again, the sun was sort of here, so it was it it was affecting my exposures. And yeah, nice noise performance. I'm very very happy with this camera with noise. Um, I've really not struggled with it at all. Um, I did get the hot pixel issue on some of my long exposures, like I said in one of my other videos. Um, but I've then been doing the in camera long exposure noise reduction, and that's that's resolved it for me for now. But um, I might start doing sort of um, might start using Photoshop for that procedure, so that I can just make my long exposures quicker. Because obviously, when you do a long exposure noise reduction, it just doubles the time of each exposure which doesn't help with battery life and doesn't help if you're against the clock and trying to get sort of long exposure images um, you know with with things that are going on in front of you that you, you want to time for um, and then here we have one final image this um, yeah this was actually uh, in front of Manchester United I thought I'd take a picture for you all as I know I've got some Manchester United fans um, and that was just to show the sort of the general sort of grain with the camera. Um, this was an ISO 100, but I then had to sort of play about with it. Um, you won't see any of the settings because the um, what I did was I actually focused on the car and then recomposed to to get the uh, to get Manchester United in there. And I did find that the car had quite a bit of sort of distortion on it, like this wheel looked. Um, not particularly oval shape but certainly not round um, so I've had to sort of play about with that in in Photoshop to, to create a bit of extra distance on the side and everything to, to make it look like a more dynamic shot um, so you know but that's the great thing about the a7r2 because you've got so many megapixels to play with um, you know it really does um, it, it gives you so much leeway if you if you need it or you need to find it so I'm still really pleased with this camera. That's some shots with the 55 millimeter lens, um, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I don't think, I mean, I've heard there's been a lot of comparisons to the, the Canon 5DSR, um, you know, for me, yeah, on paper, the megapixels are comparable, um, but I got asked by Matt actually the other day, why didn't you go for a 5DSR? Um, I've got my reasons for that, the main one being I want an all-round overall camera that that isn't massively bulky um, for me, and that I can have smaller lenses with, and you know various things like that. Sure, I could have gone for um, the 5DSR with maybe a uh, the 40 millimeter prime pancake lens, 
um, but then it's still overall bigger than the, the Sony a7R2 and I just want something that sort of isn't um, it's not going to hinder me walking around the streets of say a city but I can also do my main work with and that's that's what's really important to so have that versatility um, and you know you can compare things on paper all day why have I got a mini and not a BMW or you know that suits me that's what I'm happy with that car's not going to be for everybody some people think it's ugly some people think it's absolutely amazing um, you know you pick what you find for you and we can all get into this pixel peeping stuff with these cameras and uh, dynamic range this and dynamic range. it's all about what suits you the best um, you know buy things because you like them not because of um, what people say you should buy them and, and that's everything that's why I give my reviews as honest as possible I show you the results if I can um, you know and you make your mind up from there so I think the a7R2 for me has shown it's a really great camera but it's never going to be perfect every, every single camera out there has uh, has issues and so does every keyboard for a computer every mouse every you know everything we buy has different issues so for me the a7r2 though gets most of it right very happy with it um and yeah and the 55 lovely lens i will also be reviewing in my next video the well i'm going to leave it actually to an unboxing um so a bit of a surprise because it's not something i thought i'd buy so we'll see how that goes as well. Um, so keep watching. There will be another video um, later today on the unboxing of that lens. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm looking quite forward to that one. So keep subscribing, please. And keep commenting. Thumbs up my videos if you like them. That's great. It gives me, um, gives me some support. Makes me know I'm going in the right direction with everything. And if you've got any questions, just ask away. It's fine. I'll try and I'll do my best to answer anything. Thanks and have a great day.